Hello, everyone. Welcome to my LinkedIn Live with June. I'm super excited to welcome this very special guest. As you know, it is May. It is Mental Health Awareness Month. Um, we're also celebrating a few things as far as Military Appreciation Month, um, Asian American Pacific Islander Month. So I couldn't find the like the best person other than Maria King to join me on this special LinkedIn Live. Um, I have been, she has been part of my life and my journey ever since I became a mother. I've joined her No Excuse Mom community. Hi, Taurus. I see everybody in the comments. Please comment below and see. Tell me where you're tuning in from. Um, but I'm really excited to welcome her to the show. Um, she has made a huge impact in my personal and professional life. It's a little bit surreal that she's here. Um, I almost feel like I'm going coming towards like a full circle moment, but let's welcome Maria King. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Have you ever been on LinkedIn Live before? Never. You're my first. You just broke the, uh, what is it, the water? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the the you can say that. <laughs> My Hello. Brings, he brings the the laughter in my life. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for um, being here. Um, well, I know you. We've, I mean, you've been supporting me ever since I became a new mother. But why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to everyone on LinkedIn, on YouTube, on Facebook? Well, okay. So there's so much, right? I'm Maria King. My husband's name is Castler. I have to say that because I have not changed my name fully yet, only because when we met, I was already established writer. I already had a blog, all of the things. And so I just always kept Maria Kang. And I have three boys plus three stepkids, but they live in a different state. And I have four care homes for the elderly. I've had a nonprofit since 2007. I'm extremely passionate about health and wellness. And I do this through the medium of No Excuse Moms, which you're very familiar with. And I have a belly ball, which um, is the first massage ball for the belly. So I do a multitude of things. And, um, but my very favorite thing to do daily is to, well, several things. I love to meditate. <laughs> I love to work out. I love to be with family, especially. And, um, and I like to write, which is something that I need to do more of. That's like my goal this year. Yeah, I love that you have that goal as writing. I love to write too. And I know that you've like done, you started like blogging. I think that's what kind of jump started yes. your interest, right? Yes. So mm -hmm. go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, you know, I started blogging in 2007. No, 2005. I was 25 years old. I was a single lady in San Francisco. I was trying to find and discover myself. There was this new medium, WordPress. It was blogging, all of that then and I just started there and I actually if you go on my website mariaking.com I still am consistent about blogging and I think that is what's made me you know successful in most anything is my consistency even though it may not be every week like it used to be I'm still very much present in my um in my work in my workouts on my website you know yes. I'm just very consistent about making sure I just continue doing the things that I love to do. And that's, you know, I want to go back to writing more. I love that. I want to say hello, Johanna. She's also a fellow Hi. Filipina. Hey. Hello. This is her website right here, Maria Kang. If you don't know her, please follow her. She uh -huh. has just been a huge inspiration. Um, but yeah, I would love to see more of your blogs. I love everything that you're doing. I don't know how the heck you do everything, Maria. Oh. <laughs> you know, I mean, I have all the tips, right? I mean, I wrote the book. Do I have my book up here? It's No More Excuses Diet, right? Yes. And that was a big goal of mine since I was young is to publish a book. And I was so grateful in 2000, there it is, 2015 when Penguin Random House picked up my book and it was sold and it was just, it was extremely fulfilling for me. But now I want to write another book. So that's my goal is to write something that's truly like from my heart that's really going to help change lives. I've been through a lot in the last, you know, I'm 40, right? So when I started, when I started writing, I was 25, I was single, I was bulimic. Okay. I was, you know, I didn't have any kids at the time. I had so much passion for health and wellness. I didn't know how to manifest it. I didn't know what direction to go. I, in these blogs that I've written, I've, uh, you know, people watched as I traveled and I moved back to Sacramento where my family was. I, they, they saw when I met my husband, when we had our first unexpected pregnancy and then our second unexpected Oh my God, pregnancy. back to back. Yes. And then my depression and then the viral photo and then our separation. I mean, it's just been like, you know, people have watched 
um, and read as my life has unfolded. So I really just want to just share some of the things that I've learned from myself, you know. Yeah. I'm actually that. trying to find the viral photo. Oh. Where it is. Here it is. It was this one right here. Oh, that so one. Yep. This, you probably have seen or heard of Fit Mom. This is her, Miss Maria Kang. Oh. But you posted this picture. Um, and that was when, I don't know, when, when that was, 2013. It, actually, I, this is okay. That's a good story. So I actually posted in 2012. My kids were um, two, one, and eight months at the time. It was really meant to inspire. That was always my intent, which is why I have no problem defending my intention. Right. But it really went viral in 2013. And it was because I received a lot, you know, a lot of, you know, backlash. Haters, right. You put yourself out there as a public figure. And everyone's a public figure if you got a public social media page, right? It doesn't matter if you have a thousand followers, a million followers, or one follower, you're a public figure. And people have the right, they think they have the right to judge you. And so... Um, I received some backlash and I just pretty much said, you know, I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. And, you know, um, if you have a problem with this image, then you have to really you know, identify what your issue is and what your voice is within yourself, because um, this is this is something that I didn't create. You created, you know, whatever right. feelings you have towards this image. So it was really that that stance that made me popular was that not like that bitchy stance, but more of a. I'm not going to be bullied by the masses stance that made me, that made people like me, you know? Right. Yeah. I love that. I mean, there's just like this quote, I don't know who it's from. It's, it's like, like saying goes, whatever you think is your business, not my business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's so right? hard. I mean, I, I get it. It's so hard. I mean, I have children and I know that it, you know, people's opinions. And I mean, the first, you know, thing we want as humans is to be accepted. So, you know, it's really, it really takes a lot of maturity and knowing to, not be swayed by people's opinions of yourself and here's the thing and here's the kicker is that if you don't want to be swayed by the bad things you also can't be swayed by the good things mm. you know, if people say oh you're so awesome you're so great like literally that doesn't even matter either like it doesn't matter if you say i'm great it doesn't matter if you say i'm i suck it, what you say does not matter because at the end of the day it's me who is myself and i right and my own best like cheerleader at the end of the day you have like you have to have your own back yeah you can't just like rely on others to make you feel no because you constantly seek that dopamine right whether it's on right yeah or your spouse or your friends or your family i mean we all know a family member that needs those constant affirmations like no you have to seek it within yourself you have to be your own cheerleader like you said every day yeah i love that selena says yes don't lose your voice and identify by other people's opinion oh yeah that's so true. Um, let's talk about this too, because I, that picture went viral and that's how I got connected with you <laughs> in 2014. Um, and I've actually just shared this and you know this, like I was going through with being a new, new mother, going through a, this new journey of being a mom, quitting my job because like your husband, both of our husbands are veterans. And during the time when I had my first born, 2014, that's when my husband was receiving the GI Bill. So it was helping us pay expenses for our house, his education. So he was like, you know what, babe, why don't you just go ahead and quit your job yeah. and, you know, try to this, try to be a stay at home mom, you know, <laughs> that, that obviously didn't work out for me. But I remember, remember being a new mother and I was feeling so lost, so confused. I was the only mom in my group of friends. Mm -hmm. So I had no community, right? Yeah. So I was going, I was going through the baby blues. And then that's how I found out about No Excuse Mom. Mm -hmm. So why don't you kind of talk about like what inspired you to start this, this great supportive community? So similar to yourself, you know, I moved back to Sacramento, Elk Grove, specifically, you know, Grove, it's south of Sacramento. And I didn't have any mom friends. Again, it was an unexpected pregnancy. And I thought, you know what, I uh, I want to get in shape after having kids. I was super scared, too, because I've always been, um, you know, and I've really tried to overcome this part of myself where because I grew up in, a, in a, you know, all the Filipinos watching. OK, you know, the, <laughs> we're so hard on our physical self because right. our, one of our aunts is going to tell us how healthy we look right so <laughs> I've always been so conscious and I just was worried that I just would be just you know and just let go after having kids and so I decided you know what I'm going to 
I need to make friends. So I'm going to say I'm going to be at this park every Tuesday at 10 a.m. And I put flyers up. I put it on mailboxes. And I didn't have a name for it at that time. I think it was, um, fit, I don't know what it was. It was something. It wasn't No Excuse Moms at the time. But that's how I started my community here in Outgrove. And then as my campaign for No Excuses came, you know, rising, we called it No Excuse Mom because we had a really strong online group. I, I just feel like on Facebook and not just Facebook, but right now, even you and your uh, your community on LinkedIn, everyone just wants community. You know, everybody right. wants to, a tribe, someone they can connect with, someone that they can resonate with. And so I'm really blessed to um, to just be part of the journey with so many other mothers because they have changed my life as much as they feel that I've changed theirs. But truly, it, we only are there because we resonate with each other and we all literally have like one heart in this. No, exactly. And now it's reached over 361 <laughs> international groups. And I feel like this number keeps rising over a hundred. This is probably a lot more, I think, Maria. It is, it is more. We, you know, I need to update the website. In fact, <laughs> even the 300 number might be a little bit different because, you know, it changes constantly. We always have members, um, leaders move or leaders come in. Oh, do you remember that? That was so Oh awesome. my God. Yeah, I'm in here. Can you guys spot me? <laughs> That was such oh a my great god! That was video. that was the last that was the last retreat, wasn't it? Yeah, because so the, mon yeah. the money that we raise um, whenever we sell T-shirts or do challenges is to host these retreats for our leaders. Um, I, I really like to invest in our leaders the most because that is really what our um, our theme is: is that leadership starts at home, and that's what right. it's on the mother. I feel I'm so I feel so strongly about our health issues in America. And, you know, I've, I've done programs in schools, I've, I've seen programs in companies, but I do know for sure that it doesn't matter if you spend five hours with a kid, you know, every week at school, if they're going home and watching video games and eating crap, then they're not going to be healthy. And it's just really the example of the parent that needs to be um, fixed, right? Right. And so that's why I really focus on leadership at home, which is you know, truly the mother, which is the person I resonate with the most. No, exactly. Because in order, like, what is the mission? Like the, the tagline is like, in order to raise a healthy child, you have to be a healthy parent. Mm -hmm. Right. And it, yeah. it was because of this community that really kind of sparked my passion of community building and team building. And, I, and uh -huh. Maria knows this it kind of like jump started my career in recruiting. Yeah. And I know like, so the majority, there, there we are actually. <laughs> Uh, I know the majority of the, of the moms in the group or some of the moms that I've met, including the, the moms in my group, they're stay at home moms. And it, this gives them a sense of purpose mm -hmm. and they're able to do like I've actually picked up a lot of my recruiting skills um, as well as like business development because of this group mm -hmm. that I talked about in my first interview as a recruiter. And that's what kind of really helped me get a new job is when I was ready to go back to work. Talked about no excuse mom. So can you kind of talk about that too, as far as like how this really helps mothers really kind of gain that confidence in leadership? Uh -huh. Well, I think that love, and this is just the, the airy spiritual side of me, love changes <laughs> everything. Love is the answer, right? And so I think that especially as a mother in loving and servicing your, your spouse or your, um, your child, you develop into a better person. And I think that sales and marketing can be so tough for so many people because they're just scared of, you know, um, putting a value on like, you know, this book, right? But the thing is, is that you just know the value of what it means to take care of yourself. So it's so easy for you to say, I mean, they could feel it in your enthusiasm. That's what the thing with sales and marketing is that they just, they want what you have. You, they want what you're selling. You have an enthusiasm and an energy that it's like, whatever it is, just give, is it in a bottle? Do I have to go to this community? Do I have to read, you know what I mean? That's what it's all about. So right. absolutely, if you um, are selling something, whether it's yourself, your services, a product, a community, uh, as, if you have an enthusiasm for it, if you have love and you fully are passionate and understand why it's so important in everyone's life, you know, then it's going to be a lot easier. I remember when I first started as a trainer 20 years ago, and it was really hard for me as a new trainer to say and quantify myself as saying I'm worth $60 an hour because literally I, I, I'm a new trainer. I don't even think I'm worth, uh, even though I took a week courses, for, you know, it wasn't good <laughs> enough, right? But then I realized after after I started gaining momentum as a trainer 
that, you know what, you can either spend $60 on me or $60 on a meal that you shouldn't be eating in the first place. Right. You know what I mean, you could you can sell the clothes that you don't want to wear for 60 bucks and afford me. You know, this is going to change your life. Like, why wouldn't you invest in your health? Like, this makes so much sense to me. And it's really important that I'm able to express this, whether it's through the verbal word, through it physically, just sharing like this passion, whatever it takes. Um, everyone is very different in how they receive marketing messages. Right, exactly. Valerie says, it's all about your self-confidence. That's the key to unlock all the possibilities. Yeah, and I love that. Um, Valerie, because that self-confidence part, you know, when people say she has it or he has, mm. he has the it, it factor or that whatever it factor, yeah. that it is your self-confidence. <laughs> That's right. it. They have it. They ha they're, And the thing is, when you have it, that means they can't take it from you. Right. Like, no one gave it to you. It's just inside of you. And they kind of want it. You know what I mean? So whatever you, whatever you want to package it in, whether it's, you know, your your services or whether it's in working out or joining no excuse moms they will do this because they want it and you know with our leaders and june you know this I, i'm like i'm so confident in how it's going to transform your life like i have no problems telling you you should be a service to your community lead your community it's a different level of accountability and i know for sure there's like no doubt in my head that this is going to change your life you know for the better so um, yeah there's just like a no doubt self-confidence you know kind of it yeah i want to touch on that because i didn't know i had it <laughs> like i was never as confident but it's so crazy because right? when i became a mother that's when i really like found my calling and i swear to god it was because of no excuse mom uh, or maybe maybe it was there but i just didn't it know was it always there um and i'm just so i'm just so grateful for this community you, you've seen this before but this is like all of like the amazing things that i was doing that time you're off mm -hmm. but i was still working yeah you know i was just building community and like coaching um not coaching but like leading workouts uh -huh. but um do you remember this yeah this feature that uh -huh. was exciting too um and i think this is the first time where i met you is the um on the holiday the, well, no it was a holiday but then there's this picture right here i think it was the yeah. uh fitness convention oh yeah did a lot of those yeah oh <laughs> uh, wait i'm actually i'm trying to catch up with the comments here um let's see michelle says no excuse mom is how i met june i was seeking to connect with other moms in the community after having my second son in 2019 Aww. and i came across june's nem group Oh. Love that. And we've been friends ever since. Um, Valerie says, preach. Oh, Lisa says, what's it? <laughs> um, thank you, Teresa, for being here. You are a little bit late, but it's okay. You can watch, catch the replay if you want to catch up from where we started. But okay, so let's talk about your favorite tips for busy moms, busy working professionals, busy entrepreneurs uh -huh. um what are some of your favorite workout tips workout tips okay well I'll give you <laughs> tips in general and I'll, okay so i've always said you have to have your three p's it's like your professional your personal and your physical goals because there's a lot of fit people who have really crappy personalities there's a lot of rich people who have no personal life you know so you right. have to make sure that you're very balanced and i always say create your three p's every morning and write down what you need to do whether it's like professional maybe it's sending those starting with the hardest email you know networking mm -hmm. maybe um the meeting maybe it's something easy like um checking off all of your emails as read right um professional um personal meaning maybe calling your mom or going to the park with the kids something as simple as that and physical meaning get your workout in and be very specific so whenever there's goal setting involved you always have to be specific don't just say be closer to my parents and you know no you are you gonna what when are you who are you gonna call and when are you gonna call them you know what i mean um physically you know are you gonna go for a run how long is the run when are you gonna right. go? so i would say always make sure that you have very balanced goals Another thing that I do most recently, and I will say this, and this is to all the busy moms. This is something I recently, literally two days started doing, and I, I'm going to I'm going to give you guys this wisdom. I am is so powerful. I do affirmations every morning. I've done it for a very long time. You know, I, I love saying discipline. I love saying consistent. All of the strong power words. Focus. Um, I like to say I am beautiful and strong and 
Um, I am abundant, all of the things, but it's really important to really listen to yourself throughout the day. And you'll start to listen to other people too. Cause I was so busy all the time. Like when people say, what do you do? I'm like, I'm, I'm busy. Like I'm mm -hmm. like, like, and I was, I was, I was, I, I was seriously busy up until midnight every single day. And I stopped saying it because I wanted to stop believing it. I want to not only stop believing it, I wanted to stop becoming it because whatever you believe you will become. So even though we are busy mom, stop saying it because you know, right. that's not, it's like we wear it like a badge of honor, like literally stop thinking that's a badge of honor. Like, no, you need time to meditate. You need time to work out. You need time to breathe, read a book. You need time to like separate between work. And it's hard because I work from home too. Right. Stop it. You know, you just have to stop it. So I, I, I prioritize sleeping. I, you know, I hang out with my kids every night, you know, so all of these things, I, I, I just know that you have to be very intentional about what you With want. So if you want mm -hmm. to be busy, you will be busy. If you want to have a lot of money and you think by doing that, you have to be busy, you'll, you'll end up doing that. So when you wake up in the morning, try to mind map your day, think about how it's going to go, you know, try to meditate for at least five minutes. And I just really started my meditation practice late last year. Um, uh, these are some of the tips that I have. I know it's a very long-winded answer, but it's no, it's really yeah, from my heart. The things that I'm doing now and what I've started practicing recently. No, yeah, I love that. I think it's so important too. Is like like we talked about before we hopped on live is being intentional with our time. Yeah. Um, and then think about like when you're saying yes to something, what are you saying no to? Right. Mm hmm. Oh, like we talked about that, yeah. Right about as far yeah. as like we talked about it because like you know this. Sometimes I tend to have the shiny object syndrome where I'm like have all these crazy ideas, <laughs> <laughs> and you've given me advice. So you've given me some advice. Like June, you have all these great ideas, but yeah, yeah, you need to focus on one thing. Oh yeah. So I've seen that with a lot of people and myself too. You know, I'm not, I'm not. You know, I'm just I'm. I don't want to say flawed. I'm challenged. You know, by the shiny objects. It's really important to follow through. Okay, follow through. And that's why, you know, I don't know if you watched that YouTube of that Navy SEAL who said, you know, fix your bed every morning. But it just starts the whole follow through process. But if you um, don't follow through, because there's so many things, there's something's got to give. Right. If you, if you fail to do something, it already creates a, a thing in your head that says that you're not going to follow through. It's going to make you have doubts in the future that you're going to follow through. Not only that, but it's going to create an environment and a reality around you of people who think you're not going to follow through. That's a big one. You are who you think you are. You are what people think you are. I mean, like, not that you are, but that, what I'm saying is it makes it harder, right? Right. Harder. So you, you just want to honor yourself by following through. And yeah. you can't follow through on everything. So you have to pick and choose and have priorities and just be very careful how you manage your time because something's always going to give. Yeah, no, I agree. I'm actually learning that now too, just because now I'm transitioning from like being like a business owner now to being like what they call like, I was an entrepreneur where I'm like working full time, but I'm also having a side hustle. You know, what's crazy is I feel like I'm a lot more, efficient with my time management because I have a jam-packed schedule yeah and I have more and I and what's crazy is I'm I've been consistent with my workout routine for the past four weeks mm -hmm. I have worked out more now that I have more responsibilities mm -hmm. than prior to me starting this new job does that make yeah. sense it makes absolute sense think about this think about um what okay your work like myself if I have all day to work out I'll never work out but if I can only have this time to this time to work out, I'm going to get it done. I don't even think about it. I just do it, right? In fact, all most of our leaders, even though a lot of them are stay-at-home moms, a lot of them are really busy stay-at-home moms. Mm -hmm. I'm resonating mm -hmm. with moms that want to do more. Because mm -hmm. all, all the other ones that don't want to do be, do leadership because they don't have time, they have a ton of time. They just, don't, you know what I mean? They just make excuses. I didn't right. back to that word excuses. Um, you know, it's... I just think it's very interesting. There's certain universal principles that you can apply anywhere in life and really gain a lot of knowledge from. You know, when you're working out and you're using a 10 pound, you know, five pound dumbbell to do these dumbbell curls, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you're moving, but you're not doing nothing, right? You need to have some pressure. You need to have some weight in order to build, to be challenged. You're gonna do more when you have more to do, right? 
So I think that makes so much sense. In fact, everyone listening, if you're not getting anything done, you might not be getting, it, it could go both ways. You might have too much on your plate or mm -hmm. you might have too little on your plate. You, there's that balance. There's a balance in life that you're constantly having to manipulate, right? Yeah, I love that. There's a balance. And then let's talk about, um, before we wrap up, how community can help you reach your goals. Because that was like one of the big reasons why I joined New Excuse Mom is because I wanted to find accountability partners. Mm -hmm. And then now, um, like seven years later, I'm here building community on LinkedIn because I want to stay accountable with my professional goals. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So this community has been so supportive on my transition of being like an entrepreneur, now being an entrepreneur that's going back to work full time. Mm -hmm. So why is it so important to have that community that is going to help you stay accountable and help you to stay motivated. So it, besides accountability and motivation, which is totally important, right? I mean, if you can't do anything unless you want to do it. And the, the thing with the community is that it's energy. Mm -hmm. our whole energy. I mean, we have our physical body, which is like 5% of like space and everything else is spiritual, right? We're spiritual beings. And when we're around other energy that's similar to ours and they're all going in this direction, it's just natural for us to go into that direction. Right. So community makes it more natural to succeed because you, like I said in the very beginning, acceptance is a really big part of us as, as human beings. We want to be accepted. But outside of acceptance, you know, we don't want to be like obviously left behind, but the oh, you are the people you hang out with. And so if they have certain habits, you'll develop those habits naturally because it's, it's what you see and then what you see you'll do. This goes back to health starts at home, that parents are the first role models. I mean, we change our tribes throughout our lifetime. Our first tribe being our family, our second being, you know, our college friends, you know, then our, our, our company, then it's, you know, the, the moms at school. I mean, our tribes constantly change, but if you're a smart person, you'll make sure that you're very intentional and aware of the tribe you want to join you know so that you can be and go into that if you want to climb that mount everest you better join that tribe you know what i mean right you'll be, on, you'll be on the highest mountain on earth you know like let's do it let's let's make sure you're just fully aware of who you're hanging out with and that's so so key that is so true like you are who you surround yourself with and i definitely believe like the, the whole like law of attraction that was actually one of my favorite books is like the secret mm -hmm. um this is a uh, connection community collaboration calls us to each other same same jam same jive <laughs> i agree yeah i don't know who you want linkedin user but thank you uh -huh. so much for saying that um okay what do you want to leave with us maria actually before i ask you one like i have two questions for you um uh, we're still currently in a pandemic 2020 has taught us so many things it, it forced us to pause and reflect what is like the biggest lesson for you from 2020 um, I think there's so many lessons, you know, number one is I'm one, um, I am one, one adaptable bitch. Like I am so, <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> I am, you know, adapt or die. That's what it is. Like literally adapt or die. We can complain about like all the things that went wrong or we could just adapt and accept it. Right. So, I mean, yeah, I totally complained, but once I was done, um, crying about it, like I dealt with it. And so uh, I really loved the fact that I was able to just sit down and not travel for like a long time because I used to travel once to two, one to two times a month, you know, um, but it really made me search inward. So instead of traveling outward and outward, because I was always such a discovery person, I'm a Sagittarius, you know, I'm, I'm not big in astrology, but I do know that if, I, if there's any sign, I'm definitely a Sagittarius. And I just always sought. I always, I'm a seeker. I love to read. I love to understand things. But what I did was I went inside myself and did a lot of traveling inside myself. Mm. I actually opened up a lot I of that. trauma that I didn't know I had. I, I, I repaired my marriage in ways that I never knew I could repair. Um, I really um, dove into, dove deep in meditation. I, I did some plant medicine. I mean, I did a lot of things in this time where I couldn't do anything. And I was able to just become a really like great person. In fact, I um, was at the gym yesterday and it was so interesting. It was the first time that I've been in a gym in a really long time, especially inside. Right. And I thought, wow, a lot of people have gained some quarantine weight. I'm not thinking <laughs> anyone there. 
I'm thinking in my head. I didn't because I don't I don't observe people like that. But I'm, that's what I hear. I think that the oh got it like 19 pounds, and I'm thinking I look pretty good. Like I was very consistent thanks to my NEM community, by the way. Yes. <laughs> yeah, like, but wasn't for them, I wouldn't like it. Would have been really really hard. I did live videos. It kept me accountable. All of those things. But um, but I'm thinking, man, I'm coming out of this quarantine stronger for sure. Yeah, for sure. I'm just going to kind of, can I highlight your TikTok really quick? Because I'm obsessed with your TikToks. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Please to... follow Maria at TikTok. She actually, you like, I love seeing all of like your workout videos. Uh -huh. or oh, that's like my least popular things on TikTok. Really? Oh, this yeah. one. I posted this one, like this. I'm a this big one? fan of nature, and I believe that yeah, fresh air people, is like people, food to the soul. People like to work Get out of the gym. <laughs> <laughs> it's not as popular as food stuff, right? Or funny things. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love that. I, uh, Julie, Julie says, adapt or die. So well said. Stop overthinking. Make change now. Yeah. What a great and powerful session. Whoop, whoop. Sagittarius here. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Gurpreet says, yes, adapt or complain. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Adapt or complain. Yeah. Uh, Bree says, Maria Kang, love it. Adapt, adopt, move on. Mm -hmm. Ooh, people are quoting you. Mm -hmm. well, I didn't say that exactly, but I was yeah, like, but a pen user. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Maria. Where can people find you? Do you have anything that you want to share with my community? Uh, I mean, you can always find me on Facebook, on Instagram, and TikTok. Maria Kang Fitness is my my big um the one i use the most um i have my belly ball that people can purchase it's for, to massage the belly i have bloating issues myself and digestive issues but really i've learned a lot about i'm into yoga too right now and i'm really into the chakras and meditation Ooh. you know that there's just certain blockages that we have and i'm very blocked right here in my number two and so that really helps me relieve like in multiple ways right right um, through the belly ball and obviously the notes to mom community. If you want to lead, I mean, even if you're a, uh, we have leaders that aren't even moms. I don't know if you knew this. Oh, one. no, I think I know this. Yeah, okay. actually, no, I think what's her, I know someone, I forget her name. I know, I know someone that yeah. I met from the retreat. Laura. She Laura, is. Laura, she's, she's a dog mom. Kids. She's still a mom. <laughs> yeah, she's still a mom. And that's just it. It's moms, are, it's a construct. Just like everything in this world is a construct. But right. if you have a loving, you know, if you if you're a dog mom, if you if you love your nieces, you know, all of the things, um, you are welcome to join us. This is what we're about is about community. We're about embedding um, yourself through all these different. You know, like right now, we're going to do a meditation challenge. You know, starting Ooh. Monday. Um, but if you want to lead or if you want to join a, a group, just go to our website, noexcusemom.com, and put in your zip code and just find us. Yeah, I love that. Please join No Excuse Mom. You could actually, yeah, put your zip code in there and it'll give you the nearest location. Um, is No Excuse Dad still happening? No, not as No. Happening, but that's okay. I, the thing, this is another thing, right? I can talk all day about the marketing. <laughs> I'm not the messenger. Like, I'm mm -hmm. not the messenger. I think in the very beginning, because I was just so viral, like, and there's so many groups popping up, people really wanted, you know, more. Give me, I want to know excuse student. I want to know excuse dad. I want to know excuse oh, everything. Right. I'm just like, oh, I can't do it. But um, but no, that's not, that's my, I'm not your messenger dad. So there's a dad <laughs> out there. <that> relate <laughs> to, not me. Got it. Well, thank you so much, Rhea. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Please go ahead and visit noexcusemom.com. Follow Maria King on Instagram. Lisa says like the exercise, we'll check it out. Um, thank you, Maria, for joining me. I'm so happy that you made it to my live. Um, thank you, everyone. I will see you soon. Take care of yourself and each other. Bye. Now this for everybody fighting through the pain and the pressure. You know life will try to test you, but you promise.